what are we talking about this week? We are doing a definitive 15 of Raucous Records because I believe, uh, I think a sound bombing, sound bombing two anniversary. There was an anniversary recently. Uh, I don't know, is it sound bombing two? No, it wasn't well, sound, sound bombing, bombing two. two is 99. No, that was early. But that was, it was also May. Yeah. Um, but no, no, no. Um, well, sound bombing, no. sound bombing ones there. I mean, we can cheat and say it, that there it's coming up. October 14th, 97 is when sound. Bomb no, I, came out. I, I wanted to do it because, uh, September is the 25th anniversary of the black star album. Okay. Which isn't the first raucous records album, but it is effectively the arrival of raucous records as a thing. That's right. It's definitive. That like that like the emergence of, like if you were a rap like if you were a rap fan in ninety eight, right? So mm-hmm. coming out of first Tupac and then Biggie get shot, killed, right? Puffy does this whole thing in ninety seven. Ninety eight, you've got like on the one hand, you've got the whole like, okay, East Coast is mostly trying to sort of reorient themselves in this kind of honestly def jam mold right the dmx sort of like volume two aesthetic some swiss but like it's like keyboard but it's not super glossy right trying to be streetish right right you've got you've still got like the sort of glossy like ah, i don't know we're like kind of maybe a little bit like puff still got a lot of like there's still a bit of that in the industry for sure right you've got that um but like there you needed something else basically right like you know there like the idea like that definition video was just like it felt like it came out of nowhere it did and it was this like new option basically right like that frankly like i mean in a weird way Lauren was almost playing in a similar ish kind of space, at least like image wise, Mm -hmm. but she was so famous and so big. She felt like on a different planet almost, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She was Lauren Hill. There was nobody like her. Right. Right. Oh, and I should say the other sort of like sound that was really emerging is this kind of like, I don't know, lack of a better term, it felt futuristic. Right. And that's like what the Neptunes were doing what Timbo was doing, what Dark Child's doing in R&B. Also very like keyboard. It's all like, it's just just this whole aesthetic. And then like, here comes these two guys driving around a car in Brooklyn, right? Heavy, heavy. Definition sounds like a a BDP record. Mm, mm, Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, you know, there, there are portions of that album that certainly owe, you know, yeah, very, very much KRS, which is probably why I don't like that song. <laughs> we'll talk about that record. We'll get there. We're going to have to. But so anyway, you know, there's a lot of anniversaries, uh, a lot of 25th anniversaries that people are going to be talking about this month, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. This month is the 25th anniversary of the Lauryn Hill album. Mm-hmm. It's the 25th anniversary of Volume 2. It's the 25th anniversary of Aquemini. <sighs> it's the 25th anniversary of the Love Movement, right? <sighs> But I wanted to talk about Rockus because that felt very clock radio speakers. But it was also the thing where it's like, we, you know, if you've never listened before, Definitive 15, the idea is not necessarily the 15 best. Mm-hmm. It's the 15 definitive songs if you're trying to tell the story of Rockus Records. Mm-hmm. And individuals can have different ways they want to tell that story, right? There's all kinds of ways you can do it. And mm-hmm. so, like, for Raucous, it's not like we're just saying what are my 15 favorite records or what are the, I think the 15 best ones are, but it's like there's like there is a, a, a every time we do a definitive 15, there's always some number where you and I are like, okay, these are super obvious. Mm-hmm. And then it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. And there is definitely, I think there's a there's some core records yes. where you and I are both gonna have them on our list. Yep. Cause you have to. Yep. And then after that, it's like, hmm. I I guarantee some choices to be made. I guarantee you at least a third of my list you don't have, if not half. Right. Right. What was your relationship with Rockets Records? Were you a big Rockets guy? I was. Okay. Yeah. I um Blackstar hooked me like a hundred percent. 
Um, I bought Sound Bombing 2 when it came out. I bought Internal Affairs when it came out. I got an Internal Affairs vinyl sitting over there. I bought Black on Both Sides when it came out. I went back and bought Sound Bombing 1 and Lyricist Lounge Volume 1 based mm-hmm. off the strength yep. of Black Star and looking at being like, oh, most deaf song. I, like, I was basically like, oh, is most deaf on this? I'm buying it. Right? Yep. So, yeah, I was all the way in because like it was honestly like so much of this is and there are lots of other folks who contributed to raucous records right but like especially most but even to live quality to a certain extent and definitely Farrah Monch one of the most like individual unique artists you could think of Mm -hmm. a one of one basically Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. but like it was underground but there was charisma mm-hmm. there you know i'm sorry as you know can you believe the kids i'm sorry, well, the kids call that riz now come on get out of here yeah. man. they call it it's, that's what game is call it riz <laughs> game you get <laughs> you, game got, you got game yeah game spitter stop um, it but no like they had they had they had charisma and like most deaf could have crossed over we'll talk about him he could he could have crossed over way more than than he did if he wanted to like he had that but it was also, you know, this underground aesthetic. And it was just this like interesting merging. Like it was a one of one. It was basically like watch most Def take off and see who else comes along for the ride and then see what else opens up because of those opportunities. That's like, right. and yeah, I, I imagine a whole lot of fans also, they bought Blood, Blood, the Black Star album and then they went back and they're like, oh, I got to get these other albums, right? Yeah, because I mean, there was even in. I initially said that there were three stories that you had to tell with Raucous yeah. because I think there's a story that you tell before uh, most in Talib. They're around because they're on yeah, Sound yeah. Bombing 1. But when I think of early Raucous records, I think of people like Company Flow. Oh, Company Flow? Indelible Absolutely. MCs. I think of Shabam Sadiq. I think Shabam of... Sadiq. <laughs> I think of 88 key before high tech, there's 88 keys, yeah, 88 keys. I think of Sean J period. Um, sure. You know, I think of another MC who was very charismatic, um, like a most deaf got into some acting like a most deaf Wordsworth. Man, I was just going to say, how did punch in words? How did that not happen? I have no idea because I, spoiler alert like they're not on my list and they should be mm. but they didn't really have any like definitive records but if you were tapped into the underground you knew who punchline and wordsworth were sure and i mean wordsworth ends up on the lyricist lounge show i don't know if that was a yeah. raucous thing no i don't think so that but, was because because the lyricist lounge was its own entity it just so happened that Many of the people who, many of the MCs who performed there got right. signed by Raucous Records. Right. Um, and then, um, yeah, because there's some, some of those episodes of Lyricist Lounge Show are on YouTube. It's crazy. I went mm. back and, and watched I haven't them. seen that in a long time. Oh, man. Man. Shout out to Tracy Ellis Ross, but I'll just, I'll leave yeah, that Yeah, right she's on that. Yeah, she is on that. Um, wow. So, yeah, so that's the story. So, I f- because I feel like you're right. Black Star like kicks the door down. Um yeah. and then you go back retroactively, like you said, and and you you uh you know get introduced to like this whole other world because sound bomb I'm I'm jumping ahead, but like yeah, Black Star and Sound Bombing 2, and then what then becomes Black on Both Sides, Internal Affairs, Train of Thought, um, that run sounds completely different from Lyricist Lounge One. Um, oh yeah and sound bombing one we're not even getting into the third act we'll get there but even the first act to the yeah, second yeah, yeah, act there's yeah. a big jump in in sound quality For direction sure. you know and it, i think it, it's spearheaded by you know most deaf to live quality and high tech um you know guest starring feral munch yeah yeah man you know i love feral munch you know i love internal affairs it's such a such a strange Very like strange. the fact like man because there's some records like probably may not make the list they're 
there's there's gonna be some like my honorable mentions there's gonna be a lot of pheromonch records right like i went back and listened to the album again of course and it's just like you listen to it and you're like who else in 1999 you know what's interesting like i think most was really good at this and i think pheromonch is also really good at this like for quote unquote underground rappers in 1999 their hooks, man, a lot of, a lot, a lot of melodies, a lot of singing, just outright <laughs> singing on some of these records. Like you could, you could judge how good it is. No, yeah. I mean, but it's, 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 I mean, but honestly, it's really like the, the, the godfather, or at least like the big homie uncle to what is going on now. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody thinks that, like, Rod Wave can really sing, right? You know what I'm saying? He's no Luther Vandross, right? But, like, that's, that's an aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? That's an artistic aesthetic of, of, of how, you know, what, what hip-hop is now, what, what rapping is now. So, first of all, side note, did you, yeah. did, I listened to Queens for the first time in a very long time today. Yeah. Great song, great Maxwell sample. And that Y note that Pharaoh hits at the end of the first verse when the guy dies is hilarious. Like, yo, if my last note <laughs> right before I die <laughs> was singing Y, that would be nuts. But anyway. So, how you want to do this? I mean... So typically when we do this, we go back and forth, mm-hmm. right? We could play some records. Um, I think, do you want to start with the, ob- what you think are like obvious ones? Or I'll tell you what, like I can go first, you can go first, but like we should start with like, let's just like start telling what we think kind of the story is and we'll see if there are any surprises kind of along the way. But I think that there's, let me, I'm just looking one, two, three, four. Five, six, obvious. There's seven records I'll be stunned if you don't have on your list. Okay. After that, gets a little sh- gets a little like funky. Okay. We'll see. All right. Um. Yeah, I can go first. All right. So where are you starting? This doesn't have to necessarily be in order if you don't want it to. Nah, it's not. But gonna, it's not gonna be. In what's order. on your list? So so for me, I'm I'm just gonna be biased. Yeah. Um. So this song is one of my favorite songs of all time. Mm. This album is one of my favorite albums of all time. If we ever do a personal definitive 15, what yeah. are the songs and albums that like define your life? Did we do that? Mm. We did something like that. Okay. This song or this album would be on it um, as an awkward 15, 16 year old kid like trying to figure out life this album and this song connected with me so crazy. Mm. Um, I'm just going to play it. Sure. And I have to. Here we go. Yeah. I knew you. I knew this was the one you were going to say. Come on, man. Even to this day, this song just puts me in a good mood. This is, this is a, a perfect song. Is, is this on my perfect definitive 15? I don't think it was. I'm tripping. You can answer like a hijack. It's a revolution. The blast one million percent has to be on my list it's it's the best reflection eternal song i'm i'm okay with that yep i think you have to have a reflection eternal record i'm so glad that you're not trying to play move something which (laughs) i will say this this is not the only reflection eternal song i have on my list let me guess four to five i don't we'll get there anyway all right um yeah um to me yeah I, i think this is the best one you know I never connected with this album. Never did. Um, it made me immediately realize how much of Black Star was like, oh, I really like most. For sure. 
But what's weird is like there are like I there are other quality records that I think are iconic and need to be on here as well. But like there is just something about this and I don't know what it is. I think part of it was like I knew a lot of like a lot of my I knew a lot of people who were like this was their album. Yeah. Like f- this is what fall 2000, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was like the oh no, like and they're talking about good morning or they're talking about four women or they're, you know, they're like, they're picking Love their language. records. Oh my God. Yes. And I'm just like too late. Eh. Oh man. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's a moody album. Mm. It's a moody album. It, it feel like the, the reason why the blast video works is because it feels like a stormy day and I'm poor. I, th- I think the blast, right. The blast is great. Yeah. Obviously. Blast is is incredible. I, I mean, I even yeah. love the high tech verse. Um, yeah, had to be on the list. Had to be. Yeah, yeah. it's a great record. All right, where you at? All right, I'm gonna start with we're going totally left field. Okay, <laughs> okay. Because we mentioned them before, mm-hmm. but I think maybe my first real introduction to Rockus Records was this video that. BET somebody at BET was a fan mm-hmm. because they played this all the time <laughs> let me be clear I don't like this record it's goofy very goofy it's goofy it like before definition this was like the only exposure i had to this was this was my introduction to raucous record absolutely right and it's weird because it's not even a single on their first album it was like something that was put out after the fact but like end to end burners by company flow which is just a weird record yeah. Um in a sense like it represents like the part of the other side of Raucous Records, right? It's not most, it's not to live, it's not Faramanche. You know, this is for the Mr. Eons. This is for, you know, smut the peddlers. Smut peddlers. Yep. <laughs> they are not on my list. <laughs> I was really trying to figure out could I work red light? into 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 this list at all never heard a smut palace um, song in my life i'm good whoa 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 really Mm-mm. then you're missing out on some alchemist hold on hold on okay hold then on. maybe i've heard the alchemist songs because <laughs> this is like oh two alchemist then i've probably heard it not this hold on i was like that's terrible wait 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 oh you have heard this you've heard that yeah i've heard this yeah You've heard that record. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I've heard then I've, okay. heard, I've heard the Alchemist records that. There you go. You I was going to say they that's the thing. You get some early Alchemist records in, on these Rockus records. Yes, you do. You know. Yes, you do. Um anyway. So, you know, there was this other like side of Rockus that they were putting out where it's mm-hmm. like some in some cases it's like what it, like I feel like Smut Peddlers almost had more in common with with uh was it Game Records? Yeah, right? Game. Mhm. Which w- that was like Royce, early Royce. Yep. That's uh, um, the Bad Seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like they're kind of like cousins in a sense mm-hmm. of that, like that era. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, at a certain point, though, Rockus s- stops being about like the sort of high and mighties and smut peddlers and instead is like, oh, no, we're co- we see where the money is. And they go in a different direction. But mm-hmm. like, if I'm telling the story of Rockus Records, I, in a weird way, I kind of have to. You I have gotta to. play. I gotta have a company flow record. You have to. Not on my list in my honorable mentions, yeah. but absolutely agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, I'm biased towards now, Raucous, so yeah, I'm gonna tell the story a little bit different. I'm gonna put on a sure. triple five soul shirt. There you go. And there you and, go. And now, I go bet you didn't think I was gonna start with end to end burners. I didn't. I thought you were gonna. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go with a song that you had already talked about. Oh yeah. So no. Nah. Okay. 
Um, All right. I'm going to tell another story with another yeah. group uh, that's outside of that most Talib high tech uh, wheelhouse. Um, okay. This is when I, this song was like, oh, no, no, like this. While some of these other songs were my introduction to Raucous, like this made me yeah. a fan of Raucous. Mm. Like, oh, no, they put, they put out some hot ish, what we used to say back in 99. <laughs> It's the name of a song. It is the name of a song. Not on my list. Let's go. This is such a weird beat when you hear it now. It is a weird beat. Everything on my side is looking all right. It's the hot pop original B boy traditional. The stereo. All right, all right, all right. Because. And I'll even give, I'll give even Mr. Eon, I'll give the high and mighty credit on this. I feel like everybody kills this song. Um, Skills clearly comes from the battle scene because <clears throat> skills is like writing to like wow the crowd. I think that was my first yeah. introduction to that where it's like, oh, every line like hits, it's clever, it's whatever. A little pandery. When I was 14 years old, try rocking back and forth it might be easier to get your ish out was like the craziest line in the world to me. I mean, that was the first that you realized you were listening to a skills line. Oh, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because then that made me go into, because shortly thereafter when you you would do a little more research because Skills got a little notoriety off of that and that was around the time he put out, he put out Ghost Rider not too long after that, right? That's right. So, um, yeah, that's the first single from Sound Bombing 2, I believe, right? It is, yeah. Um, it's the first single. It's early on in the project. I do distinctly remember just being like, oh, my, like the first time, like I sometimes I'd listen to it, I'd be like, God, can this, can we just, can the DJ stop cutting this record up? Could we get? I used to listen to we, the intros on Soundbar. I I love. I did too. I love when the B Junkies cut that, cut that. Uh, oh, like the World War Three and like the w transition between B Boy Document Nine and I World War Three. Yeah. <laughs> it's just working it the whole way. Yeah, I listened to the CD like crazy in nineteen ninety nine. Hundred percent. It's it's my favorite hip hop compilation of all time. Oh, I ran it good. into the ground. So, I, I don't want to go because there's other there you there are other candidates for this fifteen on this on this compilation. Mm. Yes, I was. You know what's funny, man? Like I was trying to wow. find other records. Wait, are you kidding? No, no, no. Me? I'm sorry. There's there's one other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, easy. There's one other one. The rest and then of there's them, some personal favorites. There's some personal favorites. Yes. We'll get to, I'll get to those when I do my honorable sure. mentions. I never miss an opportunity to introduce somebody to Faramanch as the mayor. One of the most <laughs> unhinged records I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Officer Fleming. <laughs> then comes in with the Air Force One sample. So that's, that's the guy getting shot at the beginning. Yep. Where are you going with that? And so it was that yeah. I had shot him. Shot him. Several times in the head. Man, listen, listen. And th that whoever Unhinged. they got singing that hook. <laughs> <laughs> Fairmont thought he could sing. Okay. No, that was that was a that was a No, I know, I know. I say, that was a you know what that was? Moment. I just realized, you know, like that's like that's very inspired by like the blue raspberries and Takitha. One hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Tasha right. from Bone Thugs and Harm from Thugger's yeah, Race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, all well, all of them were obviously like out of the gospel, like out of the gospel world, like bringing that kind of mm -hmm. influence. Which you saw, there was a, obviously a ton of that in the '90s. But like very specifically, like that hook just feels like something that RZA would have put on, like Absolutely. a 1996. You know, where it's like out of the blue, here comes yeah. Blue Raspberry Absolutely. singing her heart out. Absolutely, Blue Raspberry. I hope she's yeah. doing okay. B boy, B boy. Doc, so. I didn't have that as a part of, so I have like eight that I'm like, these are on the list. Okay. Then I've got like 10 and I'm trying to find the right seven out of that. Okay. B-Boy Document 99, I feel like that's got to be on my list too. Yeah. I just feel like it has to yeah. be. Yeah. It was early. As soon as I heard it, 
in yeah. in in researching for this show, I knew like no. Oh yeah, it's definitive. It's definitive for, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to know what what other songs are uh that did you argue would be on Sound Bombing Two, but we'll get there. I mean, should I just play it right now? Sure. All right. So part of the story of Rockus is also what didn't happen, mm. right? And there's an artist who's just a fantastic example of that. Um, and that's common. Absolutely. Who could have signed, should have arguably maybe signed to, uh, you know, to Rockus Records. Absolutely. Um, he's kind of, he would have been effectively the missing piece, basically, you know? Absolutely. Um, he was in, he was working alongside everybody all at the same time. He appears on, he has an incredible appearance on a black star record that might get mentioned at some point here, possibly. There's no might. <laughs> right. Um, and here's how like the, cause B-Boy document and I might've been like the quote unquote lead single, but the single, the, what they pushed on TV was this record, a record that didn't even have anybody from Rockus actually signed at the time on it. Because I really do want, I, a part of me thinks like they thought that he was just going to sign. Like it was so close until MCA kind of swoops out right underneath and is like, oh, right. Because 99, early, this is early, early to mid 99, yeah. right? So like they are seeing, oh, that Roots album, there's like a whole other world going on out here. And they sign everybody in that movement, basically. Mm. And Common just kind of gets snatched right up and out of there. Mm. So I got to include this record. I said, I said, still. All right, shut up, Taleb. Let's go. Yeah, a lot of long, long intros, man. They wanted to give the DJ some room, For you sure. know. Check, check. It's like it's I'm like fighting for freedom. freedom. Writing for freedom. freedom. These record company freedom. niggas, I don't like when I, I see them. Like when I see them, talk with them. I've been in a promised land. I can walk with them. He is killing that. That song puts me in such a good mood, man. It's a great record. That's it's a, a better. I mean, like, I, it, it's it's the best song on this album. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bought the yeah. cassette single B side, like they used to say. Yeah. Um. um th- so uh, Apple Music has the single version of this on there. Oh, they, they also, do. I think I found the single version of, I think it was B-Boy. Oh, they have like the un DJed up version of B-Boy Document 99 as well. If you really just want to hear Yeah, this. that's on the, it's on the High and Mighty's album. It's on the Oh, it is on the High and Mighty album. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, 199, you know, like, look, Sidot X is fine on this, but this is all about common. It's all about the hook. It's all about that beat. High tech. Um, this is the, no, it's not the only high tech record on here, but uh, there's not as much high tech on sound bomb and two as you would think no there's not oh wow he, he do. does the reflection oh he does chaos i used to love chaos chaos is cool wow they have this cassette they have the cd single on apple of music what? wow Ni- 1999 and yeah uh, i know like that's what's in my raucous playlist that i wow. made for this. yeah it's great Jesus. i know that's so cool man i know i love that yeah, um 199 cool. great record you know we uh, is it just that like having the names of, of of the year and songs like why isn't that cool anymore just 2023 like just doesn't sound the same way once we got to the 2000s you know what else i missed you're right because i think you know i don't know if it's because like time just like seems like it just moves really fast because another thing that that doesn't happen in songs anymore is we don't shout out like individual cities anymore so in listening to this, I listened to the, the, the Big L album, right? We might be getting ahead of ourselves. Mm. 
And yeah. that there's that Big L and Tupac song, Deadly Combination. <laughs> and Ron G gets on the record and just starts shouting out cities. DC, Atlanta, Chicago, Virginia. They don't do that anymore. Faramanch does that a lot. He loves to shout out cities. Hey, man. Some people like traveling. Most definitely he's, a traveling. He's like, man. listen, if I shout out the city, when I perform there, they're going to go crazy. Like, that's, he gets it. That's all it was. That's all it was. Okay. Do I play the other common song on my list? Because I have two. There's another common song on your list. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. It's not the one that you think it is. It's the other one. Well, not- oh, 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 oh. Hmm. Is that is that definitive? For me, it is. <laughs> because, okay, let's have, you want to have the high tech conversation? Sure. Is that what this, I mean, I'm assuming it's Sun God, right? No. Oh, what other common record is there? Listen, man, listen, listen. You're going to look at me funny, but this is just, okay. this is just an executive decision. I hope you don't want to die. So why bring that my way? Yo, Techzilla, you know I ain't the type to play killer, but this day still arrives in my mind like a fight. But then Thursday night, had plans to be out till the night served daylight. Listen, rappers don't rap about things that happened in their day. This song is about him getting into a fight. So this is where you're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. Common was never signed to Rockus Records and this song was never put out. No, 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 no. You it you was, got a 12 inch? It was on the advanced version of high technology. It just didn't okay. get cleared. It never officially got released, but it was recorded for high technology. Is is this is this so sh- should I also play uh, Talib Kweli Lonely People from his 2004? Absolutely not. <laughs> I never liked that song. I hated that That's song. That's a gr- Oh man, that was when I was deep in my my Kanye back. Like Kanye could do no wrong. Didn't didn't one of those beat tapes that leaked didn't they have like the instrumental? Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Techzilla yeah. To me, was one of those records where people I felt like the hype. Then, like I thought that I think that song is fine. You've got that as a definitive 100%. record. Hundred percent. I no. love that's one of my favorite okay. Common songs, and Common's one of them. Okay. If I if I look at Common's discography, that's one of my favorite yeah. Common songs. Mm. Period. Love that song. Um, right. So actually, I love that song so much. It makes it it made it hard for me to connect with sun God for a while. Interesting. Cause they, because they couldn't clear Techzilla, I think it was the sample or whatever they did yeah. sun God. And that, that became the single and everybody loved it. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. So there we go. There's one of the ones that I knew wasn't going to be on your list. Interesting. All right. <sighs> okay. Um, What's what's amazing is there are like there might we we have avoided somehow some of the most definitive records. We just starting off early. So far. So far. So maybe you know what? Let me let's play an obvious one. Okay. Like a super obvious one. Okay. We already mentioned it. It's not probably not on your list, although it should be. <laughs> right. We're gonna play real quick. I just gotta play it. We gotta play definition. I hate this song. <laughs> Look at you. I hate this song. <laughs> He's skating. Yeah, of course he is. Yeah, and he then listen. Uh prepping for this week's show, I was like, boy, you know, it's a lot of to live quality at times. Um <laughs> Early, but but early Talib is fire. Quality. He's really trying to fit in so many words in some of these bars. He he was the he was the light king back then. 
The Light King? He was the Light King. Like, oh, Like King. Yeah. Like, da, 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 like when he da, jumps like, da, 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 on that da, da, record, Brooklyn, New York City, where we pay, like he's just trying so hard to get in there. Yeah. He's reading a lot of books, a lot of words in his swelling through his head. I had to get it out. They owned a bookstore at the time. Yeah. yeah. Listen, that, that, I mean, the video, and I, you don't even like redefinition. I like redefinition. Redefinition, oh, okay, you redefinition do. is cool. Oh, I love read the the video where it goes from one is perfect. It is. It's it is perfect. It is. It is perfect. I like it a lot. It is. Okay. Nah, man. When I think of Black Star, when I think of that album, there are sure. at least no, I four understand. other songs that I go to. I about that many. Oh my there's god. A, there's at least one other one that's probably gonna make our list. One right? that'll definitely make the list, but there's some other yeah. ones that I just like better. Sure. 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 Um. No, not on my list. Not on honorable mentions at all. For me. I hate this song. It's the, hey guys, do you love hip hop? <laughs> but and that's an important part of Rockus. It is, but it's it's very it's a little pandery to me. Sure. It's pandery. I mean, it's also like if that record doesn't hit and work with that video the way it does, there sure. basically is no Rockus records you're as we know it. You're absolutely okay. right. You're but absolutely right. I get it. We've all got personal taste. Yeah. You like the- I play Techzilla. All right. So it just it is what it is. Like <laughs> It's fine. But yeah, I, I hate right. I All hate right. definition. I never need to hear All that right. song ever again. All right. Where are you going next? You going more on the edge? You're gonna go because we're obvious ones. We're avoiding um there's like one, two, three, four. there's like four records that But we're not getting into like the new like two thousand on. Like we're kind of staying in this like ninety eight, ninety nine. Right now we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's a I cut it off at sound, sound bombing, sound bombing three. It's over. Where my cut off was. It was over right. after that. Um, right. I'm not. There's no. There's no. Uh, I try, on my list. They try. That record's terrible. It is bad. All right. Um, I'll play an obvious one. Um, okay. You don't have to. No, nah, I will. I will. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, I All mean, right. great storytelling, classic beat. Shout out to Ayatollah. Shout out mm. to Aretha Franklin. Like, come on, man. Obvious. Obvious. Talk wild, dope. And she came with the same type game, the type of girl giving out the fake cell phone a name. Big thing. She like cats with big names. Jewels, jet money, clip, phone flip, the sixth lane. I seen one of ass spotted her more than once. So fat that you could see it from the front. I know, man. Paparazzi shot me a glance in the cat woman stance with the fat booty pants. What's your name, love? Yeah, no, look. Um... If you were to do a list of like, I don't know if I want to use the word best or iconic, but like, however you want to put it, like samples in hip hop Mm. use like that's, if you're doing like a best sample, like best records with samples or something Mm. like that on it, boy, that's, that song might be on that list. That's a, that's a perfect sample. So much so I hate J.I.D. reusing it. It's also kind of lazy. Yeah, leave it alone. Shout out. And then Ayatollah like made a lot of money off of this and decided to like only make beats that <laughs> I had an Ayatollah beat tape because I, I miss those days when like when producers would shop beat tapes, somebody would get it and then they would like leak online. So we, mm. I would have so you'd get like I had knots. I had ninth wonder like i had uh aqua like there were beat tapes of producers who were aqua actively shopping beats to artists or whatever so yeah i had an ayatollah beat tape that had some fire on it but like half of the tape were like most uh miss fat booty type beats because i'm sure that's what people were asking we didn't even call them tight beats back then no we didn't no no we didn't so all right well if you're playing that then I feel like I have to play what I feel is the companion. Okay. So the other important lead single for Raucous Records in the fall of 99, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they should have cleared the sample. 
I'm just saying, okay. maybe this guy's career would have been a little different. But we still got this. <laughs> maybe they should have cleared the sable. I'm just saying. Listen. Also a perfect sample. Who produced this? Uh, I think Lee Stone and Farrah Munch, like all their records. Yeah, I said it. Rub on it. New York City gritty committee pity the fool that. My first off, let me say my two year old, uh, this beat scared her. <laughs> <laughs> this beat scared her. Yeah, sure. Um, but yo man, hey man, listen. Love, that's a perfect record. Listen, you wanna talk about you wanna talk about somebody getting somebody uh getting beat up when a song came on? They used to play this in the club. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. I went to a couple yeah. of a clubs. This, I was 99. This is 99. So I was like 15. I was, I went to, what a, are you doing in clubs at 15? Hey, listen, man, I was, I was out and around. Listen, I was, okay. I was you were getting, in, you were out in the streets. I started going to clubs when I was 13. Yeah, for sure. Had you already hit your growth spurt? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. You're just some, like five foot two. Yeah, I was like five. I was like five. I mean, I was tall. I was tall. I've always been tall. Sure. I was like okay. five ten. I say five ten. Oh, okay. All right. Because yeah, right. when you say my growth spurt, I grew six inches in the summer, so I went from five eleven oh, to six you, three. Oh, you went. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like five ten, five eleven. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was going. I was, I was in the spot. I was in the spot. Yeah, man. They were playing this in the club. Like, girls were dancing to this. Like, sure. Like, like, I don't know if y'all remember, <laughs> y'all aren't around, when they were playing like rapidly rap, hippity hop beats. Yeah. 99, 2000, whoa, like girls, pretty girls too. This was <laughs> All right, my bad. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm say, I've said too much. This, but look, this was the era of the chick record. It was. It and was. yet. Simon says is proof that no, actually, with just a perfect sample flip, it kind of doesn't matter. It's, it's the the energy of that song, especially in 1999, because it's a, oh it's God. a new energy, right? So sometimes when the energy is so new and real and like undeniable that like yeah. it doesn't matter what it's about. Fairmont can can command women to rub on their breasts, and they're like, "All right, <laughs> this beat is great." He. You know, um, judging Farrah Manch's 1999 lyrics by 2023 standards, it's really just going to lead you down a path of sadness. You know, there's just, it's all incredible. Every single song of his, for the most part, with one exception, which, God, I'm so tempted to put in my list. It's definitely an honorable mention uh, because it's a perfect song and I love it. Okay. Like with like one exception, they're all incredibly misogynistic, like insanely misogynistic. It, but in a in a this is gonna sound like I'm making excuses, but like this is just the truth. It was the fashion, like that's just what people did, as awful as that is. And and even like the rapidy rappers would do it, like they would they would relate like microphones to women. <laughs> so you would Look, so you'd like hide the misogyny in like like battle raps. There's a song on Mancha's album called Rape. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. He, he said he inseminate the earth now, take its virginity. <laughs> oh. That's not misogynistic, but it's just like no. the type of like rapidy rap bars that that were like, ooh. If your do- if your two year old was scared of 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 Simon Says, how how, how did how did she feel about No Mercy when that beat drops? Did like ah uh, no, nah. f- that's out- did, was there like a shock wave that just emanated out of your speakers nah, and they're man. like blown she, away? Yeah, she she cool for those. Like that's just a, that's just a fire alchemist beat. That beat's not scary. <laughs> that beat's just fire. You know what I'm saying? It's the it's the, I mean it's Godzilla. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, there's yeah. like a a fear factor versus like right, the right, right. shock of that that intro on no mercy that lulls you to sleep and then just like goes left, which is ima- amazing. Yep. Yep. 
All right. Okay, where do I go? Um, stay obvious. Yeah, let's let's go obvious, man. I'll I'll just get this I'm one. I'm curious out the way. to see what you're playing now. Let we'll just get this out the way. I just want to okay. I just want to note this. Like the song was fire at the time, right? I never need to hear this song again in my life. What record are you playing? Oh, you're playing this version. I thought about playing the uh, the Busta Rhymes remix. I thought about it. I did. Actually, you know what? Let's play. Let's play the remix. I got it right here. Go ahead. You got it. History. It was history. So this is the Get By remix, right? Mm. To live, most deaf, Kanye, Jay-Z, Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes snakes right? on it. This is a moment for it, Ruckus. It is a moment for Ruckus. Yes. Because this is another, like if if common is one like sort of door that should have opened and didn't, Kanye is the other door in a lot of ways that could have opened and didn't. Right. But also remember oh. this follows. This follows the Black Album when... No, Jay, this is before the Black this Album. This is before... So, because Jay name drops Quali on Moment of Clarity. He does. Um, okay, I thought that was beforehand. I thought that was like the Olive Branch, in addition to Kanye, of course, but I thought that was the Olive Branch. Okay, all right. No, no, because this comes out early 03. And, and Black Album is what, fourth quarter? Late 03. Yeah, yeah. Like November, November 03? Okay. All right. All right. I got you. I got you. So Kanye is the other sort of what if for Rockus Records mm-hmm. in two distinct ways. Number one, he could have signed with them as an artist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you watch right? the Genius that documentary. They, they Genius documentary shows like that was on the table. Yep. Right. But the other way is what could have been for a second most deaf album. Which is also documented on Genius. Right. Um, where they were, you know, going over names, called it, you know, threw out a name Most West. Most right. really liked it and, you know, really wanted to do it. It just never happened. And a second Most Deaf album before, uh, I was going to call it The Big Bang. What's the name of that? It's terrible. The New Danger. The New Danger. Desperately needed. A Most Deaf album in 2002, 2001. Yeah. Would have been insane. Right. Some some early Kanye beats, maybe, you know, because there's records that aren't going to make my list, but could be honorable mention stuff like Good to You, even Gorilla Monsoon Rap. Like some of the, like that quality album has some crazy beats on it. Gorilla Monsoon Rap is on my honorable mentions <laughs> just because I love that song. Yeah. I mean, Get By the single, like the first single was really big. And it, it's, but like this remix, we didn't know it at the time. This is effectively the end of Rockus Records. Mm. Because in 02, they signed a joint venture deal with MCA just before MCA folds. And then Geffen slash Interscope buys Rockus. Mm. And then they their stuff gets sold off for parts like two years later. Like that's it. Like label chaos, which is why there's no Cool G rap album, which is why the mad skills album doesn't really come out which is why like it all just like there's just you know it's all chaos right oh yeah, so that mask is, it was called what was it called i ain't mad no more it ain't safe no was it ain't safe no, no that's maybe bust, that's bust no the rocks I, <laughs> I think it's i'm no because he dropped mad right. skills because he was just skills that's right he just became skills became skills oh crew love was such a bad song is that with missy yep hold on i don't remember crew love at all Uh, crew, I'm um, not crew love, crew deep. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't remember that. <laughs> I forgot him. again. Perf- he he is a stage rapper. He's he's a theater kid for hip hop. 
it makes sense. Yo, let's flip rapper's delight. That'll go over in a crowd. Mm. That's funny. That was terrible. You know, I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, anyway, so what was he saying? Um, <laughs> yeah, so sorry, get by remix. Like, we don't know it. Like, that's the end. Like, even though it seems like, oh, no, actually, this is Rockus Records taking off into a like a whole different strat. Like, Jay has given them the cosign. Mm-hmm. When he is still at the peak of his powers. He's Jay. But that get, that get by remix. I mean, get by is an incredible beat. It's a great song. And then the remix, like, that was back when it was like, oh, remix. Whoa. It was a big deal. I think, and I think, didn't it, it, it there was a the unofficial version was on one of Kanye's mixtapes, right? I think it was on like I'm good or something like that. And I then so, there yeah. was and I think the official remix, because there's two versions. This is like okay, it's CRS, so we're nerdy. So they did like a full like mix and mastered version with like, you know, drop the beat, did all this stuff here, they messed with that. I believe that's on the S dot Carter collection, I believe. Mm. Yeah, 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 I believe, and I think the first version didn't have Busta Rhymes, and I think the final version had Busta on it. Don't quote me on that part, but but get by whether the remix of the original has to be on there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Ah, <sighs> all right. Go ahead, your turn. Um, 